Happy sunny Sunday, everybody. I'm Chef Elon Wenzel, owner of Element Knife Company. Today we are coming at you from Studio Kitchen Colorado, home of the Modern Eater Network. So we're going to make a short video today going over the fundamentals of fish butchery and what you can do with that fish featuring Colorado products. So we have a raw version, sashimi here, and we also have fish nachos. So at the end of the video, we'll put the finishing touches on and I'll explain what we're doing. So we have element knives. Today we're going to be using a chef's knife. Super easy, very versatile. Uh, we also are featuring bow and arrow, Colorado Mills oil, Ardent Mills flour, Rocalitas tortillas, and the Spice Guy. So let's get into it. Uh, this is a round fish and coming out of Alamosa, it's a hybrid striped bass. It is uh, very sustainable, very easy to use, uh, and very easy to butcher. So what we want to do is, for the video, I took the liberty of taking the scales and guts out. So we're going to go through. So first we want to take the head off, and I use this fin for a little pressure, and it helps me understand where I want to cut. So we're going to make a first cut, and the tip of the knife is going to stop right on the spine. I don't want to cut through. I'm going to let the knife stop right on that spine. Now we're going to cut all the way through. Take the heel of the knife. This is the strongest part of the knife. And we're going to hit it like we mean it to cut right through the spine. Gently flip this over. And we're going to do a reverse motion. And we pop the head off. So uh, I see there, you know, there are different ways to skin a cat. Uh, there are different methods of butchery. But I think this is the most uh, efficient, especially in a restaurant setting. But it's super easy, and it's gonna, the minimum amount of movement. So we don't have to turn it and flip it and turn it and flip it. So first thing we want to do is release the bottom portion on the belly side, meat from the bone. So we just lift up here, starting at the heel of the knife coming down to the spine lightly, just using firm pressure. I'm not using maximum pressure. We're going to do the other side. So we flip this over. And we're going to cut gently into the meat of the filet towards the bone. I don't want to be cutting upward. You always think cut to the bone. That way you're not going to cut into the meat. So we're going to make a line just cutting through the skin, turning over. We're going to make this cut once again. Now we are ready, and the fish is facing the right way to take the rest of the fillet off. So tip of the knife in through that initial cut to the spine, and then firm pressure to the spine. I'm going to pull away from the tail towards where the head was to release that meat cleanly. So now the meat on the underside is released and the meat on the back side or top side is released but it's still connected where the spine is so the easiest way is take your knife over the spine hold on with your towel for a little grip just gently and ever so slightly I have my knife angled towards that bone of course, I'm exaggerating here, but we want to give you the, the image of what's happening. We're just going to lightly release. And I want to finish here. So now that came off nice and clean. So I've seen people do some odd things where they flip it over and do this or do that, but we don't need to because we've set it all up with those pre-cuts. So now just opposite of what we did. Now we're going on the underside of the center bone. Tip to the spine. Firm pressure, not maximum power. And if you don't feel safe here, use your towel. Now we're going to release once again. Hold on with your towel for a little grip. Make sure your blade isn't getting caught up in these spines. And now we're through. So, just come through. 
and bam, we're done. As far as releasing that goes. So now we want to take off the belly bones and the pin bones. So firm pressure, finger over the spine of the knife, just lightly push forward, and we're riding the underside of those belly bones. So it's important to have a sharp quality knife. And you can find these at elementknife.com. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions about what knife is best for what application or what knife is a way to get you introduced to these high quality knives. So now I want to take the pin bones out. And there's two ways we can do it, but I, I want to leave this fish a little more whole. So we could cut this center portion out. It has some pin bones coming off of the spine. But I would rather take these fish tweezers and find each little bone. There's just a few of them. And we pull them out. They come out very easily. Maybe on the second fillet, we'll just cut it in half so you can see if you don't have something like this. Needle nose pliers work as well, but buy a new pair. Don't use something out of your garage that's dirty and greasy. So now we want to take the skin off. Now, if you scaled it, you certainly could leave the skin on if you want to do a pan searing, maybe using some of the bow and arrow cornmeal, do a flour with Ardent Mills flour, dredge it, do a little cornmeal pan sear. That would be really great. But if we're going to do sashimi, we want to take that skin off. So use your towel. And with your finger on the underside, just pull a little bit so you get a little grip, a little traction. Gently, with the tip of your knife, cut through the fillet in down to the skin, but not cutting through the skin. And we're just going to edge it back and forth, back and forth. And now you can see that I opened it up a little bit, which will give me better grip. So now I'm going to use my towel, hold on, and just gently with the knife almost flat but slightly angled to the cutting board, pull that off. There we go. Skin came off nice and clean. And I think I'm, oh, here we go. Just missed a little piece of the vertebrae. So now, here's a trick. On the opposite side, since the fish is facing the other direction, you can invert your knife and with the tip just come in ever so gently to get a head start on getting underneath those belly bones. Now we can come under just little by little. See I made a little mistake here but we can just come back. Sometimes you have to push forward, sometimes you have to pull. And some of you might see this yellow mark. What that is, I'm not sure what the gland is, but there's a gland that's always positioned in there. And sometimes it leaks or in transport. Sometimes even when you're butchering it, you might break that open. And we tend to cut that out because it can be very bitter. It's not harmful for you. So now if we wanted to um, take the belly bones out without having to use the pin bone uh, tool, the fish tweezers, start with the head and just cut down right over that line. Now come through and just cut that center portion out. And all those pin bones are in this center piece. So we're going to trash that. Now you can come through and skin it from here. And this would be a good application for these fish nachos that we made. So you could come through and you could just make some cubes. And what I did was I had used Zach Johnson, owner of The Spice Guy. He makes this really nice black magic. It has uh, charcoal powder and some other herbs in there. And I thought it would be fun with the blue cornmeal, kind of make it very black. 
and you can see here, I'll show in this camera, just the mixture of the cornmeal, those herbs and seasonings with the black magic. And I used the Ardent Mills flour, did a light dredge, and then put into this herb uh, and uh, black magic seasoning mix. That was really fun. So if we were going to do sashimi, I might do something like this, just trim this up a little bit. Typically, we always start towards the tail when we're cutting sushi or sashimi. But once again, the importance of a sharp knife and elementknife.com. So knives are long for a reason, and you get great cutting power, nice, clean slices. So we can just come through. Let's see. And making some nice thin slices for sashimi. It's a little easier on your palate. Not so much fish to work through. This Alamosa striped bass is just really fun. It's very clean. It has a high oil content. Great kind of sweetness to it. And like I said, it works great. You can, make, you can use it raw or you can cook with it. So now we have, we'll put the finishing touches on this sashimi. So what I did here is I used uh, fermented citrus pepper paste, yuzu, creme fraiche, and a cherry onion marmalade that I made with some western slope cherries. And I think it's going to be great with some sea salt and some fresh squeezed lime. Now, if you want to do this at home, you don't have to use these components. You can mix it up. Uh, go to the Asian market. Find some things that you think might be really fun. Uh, you can find pickled wasabi. That would always be really cool. It's got a nice kind of saltiness to it. Uh, you can use herbs or cilantro or jalapeno, uh, some oils and citron. So we're going to just squeeze some lime right on here. I also have yuzu on here, or excuse me, ponzu. Ponzu is basically like a citrus and vinegar soy sauce. And this is Malden sea salt coming out of Essex. And um, not all salts are created equal. This one has a very light kind of flaky quality, and it's not overly salty. There are some salts that are really hard on your teeth or others that are intensely salty. But this is a great finishing salt. I wouldn't cook with this one, but great to put some finishing touches right on here. And with the ponzu and the sweet and the savory, the citrus, this salt just is so awesome. All right, now for these fish nachos, uh, Roccolita's tortillas. Uh, I believe you can find them. I can't remember. So contact the Modern Eater or Element Knife Company, and I'll get you... Uh, how to find those in your local uh, grocery stores. So we're using Roccolita tortillas, some cilantro, jalapeno. I use this really nice roasted jalapeno sauce as well. Feel free to get creative with it. You can use um, some of the Mexican fresh cheese. Uh, this is a cheeseless option. And once again, I thought with this one, it would be fun to uh, squeeze lime with the jalapeno and their cilantro and onions. So I took red onion and I shaved them and then I rinsed them so they're not too intensely oniony. So we're getting all the benefit of the onion and the sweetness but without it overpowering the flavor of the dish. Now once again I'm using the Spice Guys smoked salt. This is an Alderwood smoked salt. And this goes so good with the lime and the cilantro and jalapeno. So a little finish there and super tasty. So get creative at home and enjoy. Thanks for watching.